Welcome to the Money Code Secrets. Now in this episode, we reveal the secret Talmudic wealth formula for achieving long-lasting wealth as well as a long life. Now the Talmud is a sacred ancient Jewish text that is the primary source of Jewish religious law and theology. Now in the past, Nearly all Jewish communities, the uh, Talmud was the centerpiece of Jewish cultural life and it was foundational to all Jewish thought and aspirations, serving also as the essential guide for the daily life of Jews. Now the Talmud is a vital tool used for decoding the Hebrew Bible and it contains secrets on how to become wealthy, succeed in business, and how to live a long life. There is a great deal of interest in the Talmud, especially now in parts of Asia and Russia. South Koreans have developed a fascination for the Talmud, and they feel that the secret to success is hidden within the pages of the Talmud. Now, the Talmud is also popular in China. There is a belief there that it can give one an edge in business. The William Davidson Talmud, Nida 70b, answers the question, what should a person do to become wealthy? He should increase his time involved in merchandise and conduct his business faithfully. Now, many people have done so, and it did not help them become rich. Why? Because they should also Pray to receive wisdom from the one to whom wealth belongs. As it states in Haggai 2.8, Mine is the silver, and mine the gold, says the Lord. The Babylonian Talmud reiterates, What must a man do that he may become rich? Let him engage much in business and deal honestly, and let him pray for wisdom. For it is said, Mine is the silver, and mine the gold. What must a man do that he may become wise? Let him engage much in study and a little in business and let him pray for wisdom. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and discernment. Proverbs 24, 4 states, And by knowledge are the chambers filled with all precious and pleasant riches. The Talmud decodes this to mean that Whoever has knowledge will eventually become wealthy. Babylonian Talmud Sanhedrin 92a. Proverbs 3.16 states, Length of days are in her, wisdom's right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. The Babylonian Talmud Baba Batra 25b decodes this to mean that through obtaining wisdom, one will obtain wealth. Proverbs. Proverbs 8, 12 and 18 of the NET Bible states, I, wisdom, live with prudence and I find knowledge and discretion. Riches and honor are with me. Long-lasting wealth and righteousness. Now the Bible and the Talmud teach the path to long-lasting wealth is achieved by balancing and dividing your time wisely among three different activities. Dealing honestly in business, praying for wisdom, and the process of acquiring wisdom through reading the Talmud, the Bible, and other informative and wise texts. The Bible is very clear how crucial it is to balance the amount of time you work and dedicate to becoming wealthy. Too little work is not advised. Proverbs 10.4 of the NLT says, Lazy people are soon poor. Hard workers get rich. Proverbs 13.4 of the NLT states, Lazy people want much but get little. But those who work hard will prosper. <laughs> However, Working too much or trying too hard to get rich is also not advised. Proverbs 23.4 of the GNT warns, Be wise enough not to wear yourself out trying to get rich. This applies to those that work seven days a week with no time for acquiring wisdom. 
The Bible and the Talmud strongly warn against engaging too much in business and not spending enough time acquiring wisdom. Proverbs 23.5 of the GNT clearly warns, your money can be gone in a flash, as if it had grown wings and flown away like an eagle. This Bible verse teaches that without wisdom, money can be earned and then quickly lost. However, acquiring wisdom will result in long-lasting wealth. The Perke Avat, in English, which is known as Chapters of the Fathers, is a compilation of the ethical teachings and maxims from rabbinical Jewish tradition. Perke Avat 2.5 states that no one who engages too much in business can become wise. Perke Avat 2.5 advises, limit your business activities and occupy yourself with the Torah. Now what is the meaning of Proverbs 3.16? Length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand are wealth and honor. Now the Babylonian Talmud, Shabbat 23a, 63a, states that for those who study the Torah, right-handedly there is length of days, and wealth and honor, but for those who study the Torah left-handedly, there is wealth and honor, but not length of days. Right-handedly means studying the Torah intensely in depth and trying to understand the underlying reasons for its teachings. Left-handedly means superficial study of the Torah or studying the Torah for ulterior motives. Now, the Hebrew Bible and the Talmud are the two greatest books ever written on wealth and success. Remember that. So take the time to read and study them. The Christian Bible contains some remarks about wealth and riches that can be misunderstood and are by many people. Therefore, when studying the Bible, it is best to focus your studies on the Hebrew Bible, not Genesis to Malachi, also called the Tanakh, which contains much wisdom on acquiring wealth. The Torah is the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, that's Genesis to Deuteronomy. Now, when reading the Christian Bible, that's the books after Malachi, be aware that money itself isn't evil, it's the love of the material possessions that money can buy, which results in negative consequences, as discussed in our podcast episode number 15. The attitude of the Hebrew Bible and of the Talmud towards wealth is quite positive, since it enables one to help others. God blesses those that use their wealth to help the poor. Peace and a long life are the results of applying the wisdom found in Jewish texts. There's nothing wrong with enjoying one's wealth in a, a modest, unostentatious manner. Besides, studying the Hebrew Bible and the Talmud, there are several books written on wealth creation that you should be studying and studying diligently. The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. The Money Code by H.W. Charles, and Rich Habits and Poor Habits by Thomas C. Corley. Limit your study to these five books. The Bible in Ecclesiastes 12.12 12 warns against reading too many books. Limit yourself to several success books, which you reread and study diligently. Now, the book Rich Habits, Poor Habits is based on the study of the daily activities of rich people and poor people, revealing the immense difference between the habits of the rich and the poor. Now, according to the book, wealthy people use their time wisely. For the rich, every minute counts. The rich value time as the most valuable commodity in the world. How you spend your time each day determines the financial circumstances of your life. Wealthy people are extremely productive. They value and use their time very wisely. They stick to their daily disciplined routines for many years. These daily habits have a cumulative effect 
which eventually lead to wealth. People become wealthy because they have a strong will to succeed in life and have a deeply rooted desire to achieve much more than the average person in their lifetime. Wealth can be achieved by anyone with a strong will, discipline, and time spent wisely. Time is the one common denominator that all people in the world share. There are 1,440 minutes in each day. With respect to time, we are all on equal footing. Most people, rich or poor, use about 1,200 of these minutes for the following. Work and commuting to work. Family time. Sleeping, eating, bathroom, bathing, grooming, and dressing. That leaves about 240 minutes of time each day. According to the Rich Habit Study, the rich make good use of their 240 minutes. Over 80% of the self-made rich engaged in 60 minutes a day of dream setting. Dream setting involves the pursuit of a dream or a vision and the activities behind it. This is something outside of work, such as engaging in some side hustle or business. Nearly 80% of wealthy people engaged in 60 minutes a day of deliberate practice or study. Each day, the self-made rich people in the study regularly practice some skill and devoted time to increasing their knowledge. Wealthy people create a clear vision of what they want, and they take action toward achieving that vision. They put their goals into writing, and they take daily action steps to eventually achieve their vision. According to the Rich Habit Study, 62% of wealthy people focus on their goals every day, as opposed to 6% of poor people. 81% of wealthy people create daily to-do lists. Nearly all of the rich engage in 30 minutes a day of exercise. Aerobic exercise has numerous benefits, including improved mental functioning improved productivity at work, improved energy, improved attention span, reduced stress levels, and improved health. All these benefits lead to improved money-making abilities. You can't make money in a hospital bed. <laughs> Aerobic exercise contributes to an overall feeling of well-being by releasing endorphins that are natural painkillers that promote an increased sense of well-being. Now, according to the Rich Habit Study, all the rich engaged in some relaxation and leisure activities. The rich are not superhuman like everyone else. They require some daily relaxation, of course. Wealthy people have a deeply rooted desire to do much more than the average person in their lifetime, so they limit their relaxation time to no more than an hour a day. Watching television or engaging in social media are the least productive ways to relax. According to the Rich Habits study, 67% of wealthy people watch less than one hour of television per day. Wealthy people also avoid reality shows. Only 6% of the wealthy watch them compared to 78% of the non-wealthy. Wealthy people choose productive ways to relax. Productive forms of relaxation include a, getting a massage, meditation, prayer, yoga, walking in nature, a power nap, or leisurely reading. Reading is a good way to relax, and 86% of wealthy people love reading. An impressive 88% of the wealthy read for 30 minutes or more per day. The wealthy don't believe in luck. Nope. Instead, they believe that wise actions and habits create opportunities for success. Wealthy people believe you have to create wealth through focus and hard work. Now the Talmud, Sanhedrin 24b, views gambling as very unproductive. Now, does luck play any part in becoming wealthy? Sometimes. 
More accurate words for luck include chance, planetary influence, or probability. Ecclesiastes 9.11 states that wealth and success may sometimes be determined by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. The Talmud, Shabbat 156a, reveals that planetary influence, also known as astrology, can sometimes be used to determine a person's personality. It states that a constellation makes one wise and a constellation makes one wealthy. And there is a constellation for each person that influences their lives in some way. The William Davidson Talmud, Shabbat 156a, states that the Jewish people are not subject to the influence of astrology. In other words, those that follow Jewish wisdom are not subject to planetary influence or bad luck. People are not limited to their destiny, rather their actions and their merit determine their fate and how wealthy they become and how long they live. Jeremiah 10 2 clearly states, do not, lack, do not act like the other nations who try to read the future in the stars. Do not be afraid of their predictions, even though other nations are terrified by them. In other words, Trying to read your future or following astrology is not recommended. The Talmud, Shabbat 156b, teaches that good deeds and charity delivers people from an untimely death. Good deeds make one immune from negative planetary influence regarding one's time of death. Praying to receive wisdom and studying the Talmud and the Hebrew Bible are the greatest secrets to achieving long-lasting wealth, making one free from negative planetary influence regarding finances. Isaiah 48, 17 of the ESV says, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Subscribe to our podcast and to our YouTube channel.